Hey, welcome back to Collider Roasters USA, brought to you by Espresso Outlet. Espresso Outlet is the main distributor for Collider Roasters in the USA. So we've had a lot of customers, they've reached out, they've said, you have great content on how to do basic maintenance on your roaster, but I really just need to understand getting going as quickly as possible. I wanna understand this roaster. Uh, maybe you're coming from something like a Be More or a Gene Cafe. It's not really a profile roaster. And now you have this profile roaster. You have all these advanced features with Artisan and the feedback that it's giving you. So how do I know what the roaster is doing and is it actually good? And we've done a fundamentals video. If you haven't watched that video, it's all the kind of more advanced fundamentals within Artisan itself. Uh, I say advanced, not really. I just really feel like that is the bare minimum that you need to understand. Otherwise, the remainder of this series isn't going to make as much sense. So if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to go back, find that first video and watch it as there's gonna be a lot of terms and definitions that I'm using throughout the remainder that you're just not gonna maybe follow along unless you have a good background in roasting. So one thing that I ask, if you could hit, click the like and subscribe, it makes making this content for you guys a lot more enjoyable. And it's, I think gonna be something that you're going to wanna come back and reference. So you're maybe watching this video and you're digesting it, but you're gonna come back, you're gonna be sitting next to your roaster and you, you can actually watch the video and play along and apply some of these concepts with your roaster. So really appreciate if you do that. So the first portion that we're going to talk about today in this video is going to be the charge temperature as well as the turning point. And in my opinion, these two kind of go hand in hand. And although it's only about 60 seconds of the roast, it's a very short portion of the roast and some of the data is very confusing within this for 60 seconds, but it's going to tell you a lot about how the remainder of your roast is going to progress. So let's go through and just look at the charge temperature. What is the charge temperature? So what is the charge temperature? It is the temperature at which we preheat the roaster. And this is a stored energy within the roaster to kind of kick off the roast. So you have to think of this as it is a metal roaster. It has heating elements in it, but the heating elements only do a certain portion of the heating process. You have the roaster, it's made out of metal. And as you preheat that roaster, that metal is going to absorb all that heat and it's going to create a thermal mass. So it's not only going to be your heating elements doing the work, it's going to be the hot air inside the roaster. It's going to be the metal drum that's heated up. It's going to be the body of the roaster that's heated up. So all these things really take into play on your charge temperature. Uh, an example that I give fairly regularly for someone that's not kind of got grasping doing a charge temp or how your charge temp is going to affect is think of going to your kitchen and you mix up a cake mix. Simple cake mix, nothing fancy. Uh, when you go to bake it, you don't put that, that cake in the oven that's not been heated up. You don't put that cake in a room temperature oven because the outside of the cake, it's going to eventually kind of cook. The inside's going to be mushy and gross and you're not going to get a very good cake. Uh, similarly, let's say you heated your oven up way too hot and you put the cake in. The cake is going to cook extremely fast on the outside. It's going to be more burnt before the inside gets cooked. So getting that 300 or 350 degrees for that cake, you know that your cake is going to cook at a more even um, level than had you started too cold or too hot. So very similar concept with roasting. If your charge temperature is too low, your, your roast is gonna drag along. And there's gonna be a lot of chemical reactions taking place later on in this roast that are either going to drag on or they're gonna go so fast through that chemical reaction that they're really not gonna give you the flavors that you're looking for in the coffee. So understand that this concept, we're not gonna go over those later concepts today, but understand that this concept is really gonna set you up for the next phases of roasting. Some very important phases to get the most flavor out of your coffee. So I mentioned the charge temperature is really setting you up to create enough momentum to get through the remainder of your roast. Too hot, too cold is obviously not going to roast very well. Now, how do we know that we got our charge temp correct? Well, there's really no magical answer on this, um, but there are kind of some textbook things that we're going to look for. And the first thing that I look at is the turning point. The turning point is the first point at which our beans are, the temperature is actually being measured. So we have our turning point right here. And when we introduce our green beans, our green beans are not at 170 degrees Celsius. I know this graph is a little bit confusing. This is our green 
our, our bean temperature portion of the graph. But when we put them in, they're not cooked already. They're, they're room temperature, they're down here. So the turning point is the first point of equilibrium. So we're charging our beans. Our beans start off down in this corner somewhere, 30, 40 degrees Celsius, and it finally reaches this turning point. And this turning point is the first point, just said it a second ago, that the green beans and the temperature probe and the roaster are finally the same temperature. So as the roast progresses, and our bean temperature rises, that bean temp and the probe temp are going to be the same temperature at that point. So how can we use the turning point to see if our charge temperature is actually one that is desirable? Well, in general, our turning point, we're looking at it to happen within 45 seconds to a minute. I see most people, they say they like to make it a minute, give or take. So if you're much less than 45 seconds, maybe you're 30 seconds, that's gonna tell me that your charge temp is too high. If you're at maybe a minute and a half, that's definitely gonna tell me that your charge temp is too low and you're not gonna have enough momentum to make it through the remainder of that roast. You might be able to make up some of the heat during the drying phase and save those beans, but you're going to want to make some changes on the roast after this. So maybe it's the first time that you're roasting the bean and it's a very dense bean and it's not absorbing the, the heat like you thought that's gonna tell you next time I need to up it by five or 10 degrees Celsius, which is quite a bit. Um, general rule of thumb, I mentioned that this is, we're really looking at Collider roasters and even within Collider, there's four different sizes. I can tell you the M1 is going to perform quite a bit different than the M10, but in general, my charge temperatures for Collido in degrees Celsius range from about 165 degrees Celsius to 180 degrees Celsius. Uh, there maybe are some examples on the M10. If you're trying to max out that roaster where you might need to go a little bit higher to have that momentum. But just know every roaster is going to be different. Every bean is going to be different. Um, you have your charge mass that might even be different. So you could be using the same roaster, but you're doing half batch this time. So instead of 400 grams, you're doing 200 grams. That's going to affect your charge temperature and how, how quickly that turning point hits and responds. So I hope that as we've covered these two items today, this helps you understand the charge temperature. Charge temperature is very important as I roast. It really does set up the roast for success or failure. Uh, I'm not gonna say that you can't save the beans, but it's not gonna be something that you would want to do routinely. Maybe this is a new bean that you're trying to learn and figure out how to um, roast properly. So next time, what we're going to look at is the yellowing phase which is this next phase over here. And that's going to go from the turning point to the dry end. And this is a really important phase as well. I, I say every phase is important because they are, but it's another good one to fully understand because again, it's going to make or break how these beans are set up to make the chemical reactions in the Maillard phase. So again, if you could hit like and subscribe, uh, we'll have a new video coming out on the drying phase here soon, as well as the remainder of the videos. So for today, thanks for watching. Uh, let us know if you have any questions or if there are any other videos that you want to see. Have a good one.